Hey everybody. Well, I'm back from my vacation and here to review the new Blade Runner movie. Blade Runner 2049. Though that title's a bit misleading because a couple of times they mention 2050. It's kind of weird. But I can say this, um, I wasn't a fan of the first Blade Runner movie, I'm sorry. It's a good movie, don't get me wrong. It's just, it was very slow and I didn't find the character that enjoyable. I like Harrison Ford, but not one of his better pictures, in my opinion. Structurally wise, it was good. And I was getting a lot of feel from this movie in the beginning, specifically the first act, I would say. Uh, very slow, very slow, um, very calculating, very just trying to build this world, except the world itself isn't really that new. When we saw this in the original Blade Runner, this was back in 1982, and a lot of the effects may not hold up today, but they still have a very interesting effect in the way that they present themselves. It's a way of the world we've never really seen before. And that's one of the problems I had with the movie was I've seen a lot of movies, television, anime, and they all have this very futuristic feel to them that Blade Runner just seemed to be the original of. Which, after you've seen something that's made improvements upon and made it better, watching the original for the first time is kind of... Eh? It lacks a bit. And this one definitely has that quality in and of itself. The lighting is very dark when you're outside uh, to set the post-apocalyptic feel kind of this thing has. Even though it's not apocalyptic, one could say it is only from the sense that synthetics and humans are war at war at least twice according to the opening text. So there's a lot to be said about that. And there's a buildup of it, but the problem is you don't see it. And what I mean by that is when a movie likes to deal with something that's prejudistic or something that's very controlled, it's very noticeable, something that we can relate to and something we can empathize with. But even though the synthetics are supposedly talked down in this world and even subservient, we don't really see that. The only exception is the Blade Runners who hunt down and retire old models. So there's not really much we can relate to in modern day that attaches itself to it. And if it stayed like that, I would probably say it's a good movie, but once again, I didn't enjoy it. Until the second act. Because the second act and the third act do a very interesting thing. The second act starts the predictable route. And what I mean by that is this. You see in the movie, you know exactly what they're going to do. You know the route. Oh, this is going to be this, he's going to be that, this tied to this, this is tied to that, he's going to do this, she's going to do that. And it plays out kind of what you would expect. But then about, well, when Harrison Ford shows up, things take a turn. Especially with how the characters are perceived and how they react. From there it just builds itself into a climax that seems to be completely separate from this movie, but co along aside it. And the best way to describe it would be this. Imagine, if you will, a main arc playing out. A grand story on a scale we've seen before. Um, the Lord of the Rings movies, Star Wars, all that stuff. Imagine those play out and they have their own story. But we take a little side section of it that builds into it, which will inevitably help it out in the end. Sort of that random guy showing up in the end to help everybody. Uh, the Han Solo or basically anything like that. Except they have their own little side story we never realized was a part of the main whole. And this is the case of Kay. Or Joe. Depends on which version you uh, listen to. I like Kay. Kay sounds cooler. So I'm going to keep calling him Kay. He's our titular main character for the most part and he plays it like a synth. He's very black and of emotion. He has human memories but really he knows that they're fake, he knows that they're not real, and what's the point? If you know they're not real, can you truly really reminisce about them? Can you truly have feelings for them? It's a nice idea that has been explored in many other media, and it's one thing I actually do enjoy. The idea of, you know, AI and robots becoming more humans, while the humans become more robotic in their nature and just straightforwardness. 
and the cold, calculating nature. It's played very well, especially in stuff like Ghost in the Shell and other work like that. Even The Matrix, to some degree, has a bit of that showing with the computer programs helping humans and humans helping the computer programs. It's a give and take to some degree. Now, not all of that in The Matrix. I'm referring to like one or two people before anyone says that it's a complete partnership. No, 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 no. Don't be putting words in my mouth. But Blade Runner, it actually is very keen. Especially with Kay's, uh, <laughs> girlfriend, I guess you could call her. She's an artificial intelligence who kind of serves him. But it's apparent that she does have feelings for him. Leading to one of the weirdest and possibly best shot scenes in this movie. Um, so, she's not real. But Kay is. So, there's one thing they can't really do together. So, Kay's, uh girlfriend, AI, whose name's escaping me at the moment. All I want to say is Wallace, because that's whenever she goes off, there's a big Wallace company logo that appears in front of her. That just makes it sound horrible. <laughs> but she hires a, uh... I'm going to be she hires a stripper. Well, hooker kind of deal. This movie's rated R, and if you think I'm trying to be coy with saying that, oh god, no, there's more nudity in this than a freaking Game of Thrones episode. I mean, old school Game of Thrones episode, okay? Not one of those, oh, little, little sad, no, no, no. We're talking like, hold on with this. There's a whole three minute scene with a naked anime billboard chick with our main character, Kay, which is a very touchy moment. However, it's kind of ruined by the giant naked woman. And yeah, you get that. They basically, uh, Kay and the uh, hooker, Merge bodies. Now, what I mean by that is, imagine an overlay. Basically, imagine if there was a hologram and you walked into the hologram. You would be two different entities, but if you held the perfect position and with a match, you would look like one being. And if it followed your movements, it would follow it to some degree, but there would be a ghost effect. Meaning that, well, if I move my hand, you would see the other hand moving right behind it. But in this movie's very good credit for its editing department, it's done to the point where you can't even tell the difference. You can't tell what's mm, his girlfriend's hand and which hands is the hooker's, and who's con truly controlling the actions. It's really well shot, and that's the one thing I will give this movie credit for. The visual effects are very good. Um, the holograms seem very rustic in their sense, but still futuristic kind of like uh, what we imagined the future would be like in the 70s. And to that, it stales, eh, still stays in that titular mode, especially when they take a trip to Vegas. It's not really a spoiler because Vegas, it happens. And we get to the final part, Harrison Ford's character. Yeah, he's in it. He's about as in as much as you would think. Uh, how to put this bluntly? Elton John is more in the golden circle than Harrison Ford is in this movie. Now that being said, he still does a very good job with his role, and the reason he is there is actually a very good reason and ties into K slash Joe's story and his arc, which I will not ruin because to me that's the big appeal at the end is the realization of what this whole movie's premise is. It's the idea of what truly is to be human. And now, that may sound cliche, but the way they represent it is actually really good. One of the most noblest actions of a human can possibly do is well portrayed within Joe, knowing that the actions he has truly has no consequence to himself. I want to talk, but I don't want because because it's the best part of the movie. I'm not going to spoil it. So, Blade Runner 2049. Very slow in the beginning. Ho, 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 be prepared for a very slow beginning. Make sure you got some caffeine by you to uh, wake you up. Not gonna lie, I dozed off for about a minute. Just a minute, just a minute. I didn't miss anything because I was able to pick up immediately after that, but afterwards it just kept going and going, and once the second act truly hit, I was invested. To see if they were gonna play this cliche out, and if that was the reason why this thing was getting 88% on Rotten Tomatoes last time I checked. 
But no, it's the, honestly the third act that really ties it together and makes this movie a whole. It brings everything together and makes you truly feel for both Kay and the predicament he's in. And by the end, he truly knows what it is to be human. An honest to good method, but it's something I truly enjoy. Especially when one is at peace with realizing it. But, while he may be at peace, <laughs> uh, ignore the flashing, gentlemen. While he may be at peace, I am not. <laughs> so, it's been a tradition of sorts that when I go away for a week, I do two reviews to make up for the lack of one, in some way, shape, or form. Um, last time I saw the Emoji Movie. And that was oh so fun! As you can tell from the mini reviews and all that good stuff. So, peek behind the scenes here, folks. I kind of made a bet. That if I got more than 25 subscribers by the time this movie came out, I would review it. Because I didn't think 26 of you also wonderful people out there would decide to describe to my sorry butt. <sighs> What's this movie? Well, there was another remake. Yes, another remake to a 1990 movie, if I remember correctly. 90 or 91. I, I can't remember because I... Oh, boy. Um... <laughs> You'll find out in the next review, guys. I'll post it right after this. <laughs> but to wrap it all up, Blade Runner once again, good movie. Definitely go see it in theaters. If not, Redbox, definitely worth the price. So, I shall see you in the next review. And you'll see why I'm, uh... Yeah. <laughs> well, anybody? <laughs> well, everybody, I'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Kevin Riley signing out, and I'll see you all next time. Later.